Now let us see the features of middle cranial fossa. The middle cranial fossa is bounded anteriorly by the posterior margin of the lesser wing of sphenoid, posteriorly by the upper margin of the petrous part of temporal bone. On either sides, the middle cranial fossa is bounded mainly by the squamous part of temporal bone and the floor is formed from before backwards by the greater wing of sphenoid, squamous part of temporal bone and the anterior sloping surface of the petrous part of temporal bone laterally. In the median plane, the floor is formed mainly by the superior surface of body of sphenoid bone. Let us see the features of the middle cranial fossa. So for this, let us divide the middle cranial fossa into a median part and a lateral part. So what are the features of the middle cranial fossa in the median part? As I already said, in the median part, middle cranial fossa is formed by superior surface of body of the sphenoid bone. In the features, on the anterior aspect, we can see a shallow sulcus. If we see the sulcus on either side, it leads into two foramina. This sulcus that lodges the optic chiasma is called as sulcus chiasmaticus. And it leads into two canals or foramina. These canals are called optic canals. The optic canal transmits optic nerve and ophthalmic artery. The optic nerve that starts from the retina passes through the canal and they decussate here to form the optic chiasma. And hence this point is called as sulcus chiasmaticus. The sulcus chiasmaticus is limited posteriorly by an elevation, a linear transverse elevation which is called as tuberculum cellae. Behind the tuberculum cellae, is a depression or a fossa which lodges the pituitary gland. This fossa is called as pituitary fossa or hypophyseal fossa. In some skulls, we can see that the hypophyseal fossa floor may be deficient. In such a situation, there may be a canal that communicates this fossa to the roof of the nasopharynx. Such a canal is called as craniopharyngeal canal which represents the remnant of the Rathke's pouch that gives rise to the anterior pituitary. The hypophyseal fossa is limited posteriorly by a quadrangular plate of bone. This bone is called as dorsum cellae. The tuberculum cella, hypophyseal fossa and dorsum cellae together looks like a Turkish chair and hence this is together called as cella tersica. If we see at the two lateral ends of tuberculum cellae are two elevations called as middle clinoid process. At the medial and posterior end of the lesser wing of sphenoid are two elevations called as anterior clinoid process. Usually the anterior clinoid process and middle clinoid process are interconnected by a ligament which may become calcified in some skulls as you can see here. The ligament is called as carotico-clenoid ligament. The carotico-clenoid ligament creates a foramen here through which the internal carotid artery turns upwards to reach the interpedangular fossa in the base of the brain. Now let us see the features in the floor of the middle cranial fossa on the lateral aspect. Between the lesser wing of sphenoid and the greater wing of sphenoid, we can see a narrow slit like fissure which is supposed to be retort shaped. The lateral aspect of the fissure is narrow, the medial aspect of the fissure is wide. Due to the attachment of annulus of zin, which is a tendinous ring within the orbit that gives rise to the rectus recti muscles, that is the extraocular muscles, divides the superior orbital fissure. So this narrow fissure is called a superior orbital fissure. It is divided by the annulus of zin into three compartments, a lateral compartment, an intermediate compartment and a medial compartment. The lateral compartment transmits lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve, trochlear nerve and recurrent meningeal branch of the lacrimal vessels and superior ophthalmic vein. 
the intermediate compartment transmits nasociliary nerve abducens nerve superior and inferior divisions of the oculomotor nerve the medial compartment may transmit the inferior ophthalmic vein then we can see that in the floor there are so many foramina which are arranged like an arc the anterior foramen which is round is called as foramen rotundum rotundum means round this foramen opens on its anterior aspect into the pterygo palatine fossa this foramen transmits the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve behind the foramen rotundum and laterally we can see an oval foramen this is called as foramen ovale foramen ovale communicates middle cranial fossa with the infratemporal fossa and the structures passing through foramen ovale are the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve accessory meningeal vessels lesser petrosal nerve and emissary veins that communicate to the infratemporal fossa behind and lateral to foramen ovale is another small foramen this foramen is called as foramen spinosum because in the infratemporal fossa this foramen is related to the spine of sphenoid foramen spinosum transmits a nerve and a vessel the nerve is called as nervus spinosus which is the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve and the vessel is the trunk of the middle meningeal vessels which is a branch of the maxillary artery if you trace from the foramen spinosum we can see the branches of the middle meningeal vessels that create an impression in the floor of the middle cranial fossa so this is formed by the anterior division and this is created by the posterior division of the middle meningeal vessels still medially we can see an irregular foramen because it looks like an irregular foramen which is also called as a laceration we call this foramen as foramen laserum usually in the living foramen laserum will be closed by a cartilaginous plate and no major structures other than some emissary veins pass through it but at the posterior end of the foramen laserum we will have the internal carotid artery entering so this represents the superior opening of the carotid canal on its anterior wall will be another opening which will be the posterior opening of the pterygoid canal so to just summarize on the foramina of the middle cranial fossa anteriorly we have the superior orbital fissure between the lesser and greater wings of sphenoid we have foramen rotundum that transmits maxillary nerve foramen ovale that transmits mandibular nerve accessory meningeal vessels lesser petrosal nerve and emissary veins foramen spinosum that transmits nervous spinosus and middle meningeal vessels foramen laserum that does not transmit any important structures but its posterior wall contains the superior opening of the carotid canal that transmits the internal carotid artery surrounded by its sympathetic plexus and on its anterior wall is the posterior end of the pterygoid canal and on either side of the sulcus chiasmaticus we have the optic canal now let us see the features on the anterior sloping surface of petrous part of temporal bone so behind the foramen laserum and lateral to it is a depression this depression is called as trigeminal impression this lodges the sensory ganglion of the trigeminal nerve which is also called as the gesserian ganglion lateral to this is an elevation this elevation is called as arcuate eminence arcuate eminence is created by the superior semicircular canals and still lateral this sloping surface of thin plate of bone is called as tegment tympani which forms a continuous roof for the canal for tensor tympani middle ear cavity and mastoid antrum if you look very carefully we can see two canals the medial one transmits the greater petrosal nerve that goes towards the anterior end of the foramen laserum by joining with the deep petrosal nerve it forms the pterygoid it forms the nerve of the pterygoid canal or the median nerve that enters the pterygoid canal 
and the lateral opening transmits the lesser petrosal nerve which enters the foramen ovale. In addition to these common foramina, some skulls may represent some additional foramina. As in this skull, we can see an additional foramen anterior to foramen ovale and posterior to foramen rotundum. This foramen is called as foramen of Vesalius. It transmits some emissary veins. We may also find some additional foramina called as canaliculus innominatus, which is usually seen between foramen spinosum and foramen ovale in this thin plate of bone. If it is present, it will transmit the lesser petrosal nerve from the middle cranial fossa to the infratemporal fossa.